Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Same Foo Studios. I'm Jazz, and today we're going to be painting this acoustic guitar. Now you're, you're going to have to bear with me because I got a stinking cold at the moment, so I sound awful. I've done a mock up design for this. This is for a client, so it's a, a commission piece. He wants it to be a stereophonics themed guitar. So I've done the design on my iPad and then the way I'm gonna get the design onto, onto here is I'm using, I'm not sure what the name of this stuff is, but it's the same stuff that you use to uh, apply vinyl graphics with. It's not as sticky as masking tape. It's quite low tack. Uh, and it's quite see-through as well. So I've just placed that over my iPad, turned the lights off, turned the brightness up, and then just traced my chosen image. Obviously there's three band members, so three images. So I'm gonna start off with Stuart, because it is the early years. Richard's gonna be that side, Kelly's gonna be this side. So I'm just gonna use Sorel paper, where I've traced it, place the Sorel paper on, place my traced image on, trace over it again, then that will apply the image to there, roughly, and then peel them off and start painting. To get to this stage, I've had to sand it down, mask it up around the edges, took it into my spray booth, based it up white, lacquered it to protect that then, and then sand it down again, ready for the artwork. So the first thing we can do now is to put the Sorel paper on. Try not to press on that because obviously your fingerprints will start to uh, transfer onto the, onto the guitar. And then, because it's low tack, I normally put a couple of bits of uh, tape just to hold it down with and then all you've got to do is draw over that now with, with a pencil, taking care to draw precisely where you've drawn already. I've drawn over that now, so now if we take it off, and there's our faint design on there. So what I'll do now, where on the actual photo, bits of it were missing, I'll interpret where they're gonna carry on. So the drum is gonna carry on by there, so I'll draw that in, and the symbol, you need the corner there, and then obviously the stand for the symbol is gonna continue down in his chest and his arm and stuff. Before I do any painting, I'm gonna get Kelly mapped out onto there and I'm gonna get Richard mapped out onto there now. So that's Richard. And then you've got Stuart in the middle and Kelly on the left. Now, as you can see, these don't even look remotely like them at the moment. And they don't look anything special whatsoever. But that's all it is, is to have a reference to where your lines are, so to give yourself a bearing, so you don't lose your way as you're painting along. So, let's load the gun up with some black and uh, get painting. Probably start with Richard first, because I'm right-handed, so I can work that way. The first areas I like to start off with is the darkest areas possible. Get them out of the way first, because then if you if you make a mistake, you can then erase it and nudge it into the right shape that it's meant to be, without fear of damaging any of your other paintwork. So if you if you did the deepest black areas last, and then you made a mistake, and you've got to try and you know put it right, you then you risk taking away paint that you've put on in, in other areas then. So that, that's the way I like to do it. Again, there's no right or wrong. I just find that much easier and 
sort of more common sense uh, but do whatever suits you so first area I think I'm gonna do is the uh, top of the guitar Ignore the splodge in the middle, but what I've done first is just uh, baste it up with a light shade of black just to get my bearings and uh, then I'll start going in with, with a darker black then. Okay, so that's what I've done so far. Uh, I don't know what part of the guitar that is, but just call it the top. I'm not an expert on guitars. So I've just basted it up with a light grey. Then I've done my dark areas. Next part to do is to get the uh, like well all the detail in and where the, the lighter areas would be. Stage one is uh, now complete. So that's all the, the darkest areas possible on there. Although it's not a, like a really crisp photo that I'm copying from, there's no like actual really precise lines. But where I've blacked in a few of these areas now, there's some overspraying areas that I don't want. So I'm just going to get rid of that now. So the main one is this part of his coat isn't quite the right shape. There's a, like a little uh, more of a waviness into it. So I'm going to do that. Any other areas, I'll tidy up now with the uh, fiberglass pencil to uh, make the lines a bit better. And uh, then we'll go on to the, the next uh, darkest colour. So one down, probably more of uh, this shade by here. So there's the, the guitar, guitar strap i got to do. And then, yeah, just keep going from darker to lighter and uh, tidying up each step as we go. Uh, some people will say, oh, why didn't you uh, stencil it out? Well, the, the photo that I'm, that I'm using, the, the photo is taken from in the crowd, so Kelly Jones is quite far away from the camera. So you're not going to have precise, sharp lines around the edge. And if so, if you stenciled it, you'd have really sharp lines around here, but then all fine lines, you know, uh, like semi blurred lines in the in the center of the image and that would look odd so it, it would look like he was in really in focus around the edge but not in the middle so it wouldn't make sense so that's the reason why i do it all freehand obviously if it was like the camera was right next to him on the stage then yeah you could then stencil it because it's going to be really sharp crisp lines now some other people will say we shouldn't be using tools to take paint away because uh, that's cheating well who's, who said who made the rules up uh, I've heard it time and time again where it's a big argument in the uh, airbrushing industry for some reason I have no idea why I don't consider myself an airbrush artist I just it's just an artist um, use whatever tools you got at your disposal to paint something so uh, if you want to use a brush use a brush if you want to use an airbrush use an airbrush if you want to take take paint away with tools or erasers crack on no one said there's any rules to get the job done as long as it looks good at the end of it it doesn't matter what you, what tools you've used that's my opinion anyway. Loads of people will argue with me, but uh, there we are. Bit more done now. Gradually filling it in. The photo cuts off about here. So I've just kind of like guessed that. There's trousers down there. Um, whether I add more detail into them, I don't know. We'll see once the rest of the, all the other images are on you and the background, whether that needs something doing to it or whether it won't be needed at all because your eye isn't drawn to it. We'll, we'll see later. We've got the background in and 
quite a lot of the shading in now. I haven't done the face yet. It's Michael Myers. Because I always leave the face to last, uh, just in case I get overspray on it from from somewhere else on the on the artwork. Uh, so next step now is to refine all this now with getting the highlights back in and then probably once we've done the highlights then there will probably still be a few areas I have to go back in with the airbrush and maybe some really fine lines or fine bits of detail that I'll have to do with a pencil or something. Kelly Jones pretty much done. So that's what it looks like when you put all the highlights in and obviously you can see I've done the face now as well. It's probably 99% finished or 95 or something because once I do these two I'll probably notice something that I've missed and uh, I'll go back into it and redo it. But it's such a challenge trying to paint something like obviously you see my thumb there it's his face is just a bit bigger my, than my thumb and trying to get the detail and the like more so the likeness of his face it's, uh, it's quite challenging when it's this size so now I'll probably start Stuart uh, same thing again start off with the, the darkest areas and uh, work from darker to lighter darker sections of Stuart is now in Next step, medium greys or blacks. Got a bit more done now and I think I'm going to start doing the highlights now. Um, I have done a little bit on the face but I need to get the white areas back in now so I know where my bearings are. So not far to go now on Stuart Cable. Stuart Cable is in the house. Smashing those drums. One more to go. So we've got the majority of the, the really darkest areas done on uh, on this part of the image now, which is Richard Jones, I believe. Next step then is obviously to go a little bit lighter and do the, the next shade of black. Majority of the shading done now. And so to make that look better now, now is uh, when we go in with the erasers and start to take paint away to uh, put the highlights in and the white areas back in and stuff. Now, I only do this kind of method when it's monochrome and it's a small image. So obviously you can see there, it's about the size of my few fingers there. So if I was to do this in a big image, I would be more careful on my overspray and I would uh, mask certain areas off and stuff. But when it's something this kind of size, you can't do that. So you just gotta kind of be careful. So I tend to just not worry about being that careful and then just get the, the color onto it, in this case black, and then put the uh, detail and the, the shine and the highlights back in after we've got the, uh, the, the bulk of the base color in. in. And uh, then that's when it starts to come alive. Right at the end, I will, if there's any really, really fine detail that is, I fear that I'm gonna bugger it up with the airbrush, I'll do it with a pencil. Um, so, for example, he's got tattoos that will be on his chest here, and they will suit doing with a pencil. Uh, again, on his arms here and here. Um, and like I said before, I always leave the face to last. 
this particular one he's got a lot of shine on his face so there won't be too much uh, shading on it it's only really his hair that has got um, a lot of painting on it so uh, majority of his face will be a raisin so yeah let's get on with that now now you can see with a bit of highlighting in the form of uh, a raisin with the, either the fiberglass pencil or a razor pencil or even the exacto knife just brings that to life then you can see it in a, if my camera will focus that close it won't. Uh, you can see I've drawn in the tattoos now with a I used a black pencil for that and what you'll find is when you're raising you put the highlights in you'll have to go back in then with the airbrush because you'll find you, you, well you'll notice that you haven't got some of the dark areas dark enough then once you put the highlights in it, it's like an optical illusion before you put the highlights in you're like yeah that's dark enough and then you, you put the white areas back in and then you're like oh no I haven't put enough paint on there so uh, yeah as you're going around you have to put a bit more black paint in in certain areas in, in the in the shadows uh, what I like to do is start off with the eraser pencil so that's the softest that will take the least amount of paint off get them highlights in first and then ones for uh, they're even lighter highlights then go in with the fiberglass pencil and then finally if you need some really white highlights you could use a uh, pen like a white pen a Posca pen I find they're good or because I've based this guitar white first obviously underneath my black paint is white so if you want a really white highlight then I use the exacto knife to just scrape it off which is typically used for the the shine on the guitar and the buttons and the exacto knife is good enough for that because you can just take a small amount of paint off in that area so now we gotta do is the face and I'll show you now the finished part of Richard Jones's face so there he is it's probably the best face on here because just because it was the best photo I had of the three of them the artwork is pretty much only ever as good as the photo you're using as a reference quote there and I've carried on the uh, the beam of light that was hitting on top of Kelly Jones there continued it all, all the way up so yeah I'll hit that with some lacquer now and then show you it once I've uh, demasked and flat and polished it and there it is all flatted down now so you can see it's gone like uh, kind of like a satin finish where I've sanded it all and I've sanded it down with uh, 3M 2000 wet and dry so obviously do that with water and a rubber block to get out uh, to get rid of all the bits of dust that's landed in it and any imperfections and then what I've gone over with after that is just by hand I've gone over it with the 3000 grit trizact uh, it is designed to go on a DA, it's, uh, it sticks on the velcro, but because it's only small, I've just folded it in half and done it by hand. And the 3000, uh, what it does is get rid of the scratches that the 2000 causes. You wouldn't think 2000 grit sandpaper actually causes scratches, but you'd be surprised it does. So uh, going over it with the 3000 then, actually just makes the job easier uh, for the polisher and the polish then so you haven't got to work quite as hard and 
yeah, just gets the job done quicker and, and a nicer finish. So here we go with the polishing then. What I'm using for the polish is a G3 Premium and I've got a little air polisher there. And don't forget, if you're using an air one, they're bloody loud, so get some ear defenders on. Polishing is now finished, so next step is obviously demask it. Went over it twice with the polisher. Not sure if it needs any more. I'll uh, might assess it again later once the uh, polish has dried off a bit usually reveals something that needs a bit more polishing. And then where the edge of the lacquer is, which is a little bit sharp. So I'm just gonna go over that. A little bit of 2000, just to blend it off. Because we haven't lacquered any of the, the side, let's keep that satin. Just rub a bit of polish over it as well. Then. Always be careful when you're demasking something like this in the middle that you haven't uh, built up the lacquer too much and the lacquer is sitting obviously the lacquer will go over the uh, masking tape but be careful that it hasn't built up too much over the uh, the edge of the masking tape because if you go to peel it off You'll end up taking the lacquer with it and then peeling the lacquer off the actual artwork. So if you think it's built up, then you'll have to cut it with a blade. So all the polishing has been done now and all the demasking has been done. All that's left to do now is to build it up. So obviously you've got the strings and what have you to go on. Uh, I won't be doing that because uh, the owner of the guitar stripped it down and I haven't got a clue how to put a guitar back together. Obviously it would be nicer if this bit was removed. I don't even know if it can be removed or not. It's probably glued down so you would just get a nicer finish on it without that being in the way. But yeah, all the artwork done and lacquered so we've got the quote there. Not really sure what significance that is. The customer's um, brand on there. He's going to be uh, selling guitars. And then you've got Richard Jones there, uh, Stuart Cable, and obviously Kelly Jones. As I said before, it's a bit of a nightmare painting uh, faces this small uh, and you rely heavily on the quality of the photo. For some reason I can't seem to find uh, very high quality uh, photos of the phonics uh, when they're playing and that's what he wanted to do when they're playing, not uh, posing for photos. So. Uh, you can only really do is uh, paint it as good as the photo really. Well, that's how I painted this uh, custom one of one stereophonics guitar. 
Uh, thank you very much for watching. Click on the subscribe button for more of uh, the projects I get up to. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one.